Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this beautiful day that God has given us. And happy National Ice Cream Day. Did you not have that on your calendars? It's, it's, July is apparently ice cream month, but this is actually not ice cream day. So you know what that means on a nice day. You gotta go get some ice cream at some point during the day. So let's do a quick poll. Favorite flavors of ice cream? Cherry Garcia. Cherry Garcia. Any other favorite flavors? Moose tracks. Moose tracks. Coffee. Coffee. Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Espresso chip. Espresso chip. Fancy. I lean to black raspberry myself with chocolate sprinkles on the top. And apparently the most popular ice cream nationwide, based on a certain poll, was um, uh, Oreo cookie. But New Englanders who eat ice cream all year long with great faithfulness and passion, and I think the average consumption is around four gallons per person. A reminder that uh, the school kits for Harvest Hand Ministries are due uh, today, and um, if we can also accept them during the week so we have enough time to get them shipped off. We will have a blessing of those a little later in the service. And also a reminder that um, we have at the church uh, a, a few cases of COVID test kits that were given to us by the town. They are free. Uh, and if you find yourselves wanting to just have some to keep with you, uh, just get in touch with the church and you can pick them up um, and either through the office and probably in the next few weeks, they'll just be available up here as well. And with those announcements made, uh, I would invite us now to turn our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the worship of God. I've known pleasure and I've known pain I've seen places I dared not see again I've seen faces of truth and love and deceit So walk with me to the land of truth walk with me where God's freedom soothes hold life's pain at the question of faith remained one small step and the beast grows tame one small step and the darkness fades one small step and we all find joy again one small step and the beast grows tame one small step and the darkness fades one small step and we all find joy again We light a candle in the name of the Maker, who lit the world and breathed the breath of life for us. We light a candle in the name of the Redeemer, 
who saved the world and stretched out his hand to us. We light a candle in the name of the sustainer who encompasses the world and blesses our souls with yearning. We light three candles for the trinity of love. God above us, God beside us, God beneath us. The beginning, the end, and the everlasting. In Jesus Christ, God broke the barrier of sin and pain which separates us from our neighbor, ourselves, and God. We seek God so we might move from alienation to new life. O God, grant us new life in you. When we deny your presence in our busy days, O God, grant us new life in you. When we feel justified in our anger and resentment towards others, O God, grant us new life in you. When we judge others before looking at ourselves, O God, grant us new life in you. When we occupy ourselves in worldly matters and reject your peace and assurance, 
O God, grant us new life in you. When we refuse to follow your will because we are fearful and untrusting, O God, grant us new life in you. When we seek the security of false gods and turn our face from our light, O God, grant us new life in you. news in Christ is that God offers us life at every moment, forgiving us and inviting us to the freshness of new beginnings. Let us praise this God of grace. To hear um, two stories about hospitality. We're going to hear the story about the angels that Abraham and Sarah recognize and have offered their hospitality to, and we're going to hear that very familiar parable of Mary and Martha. We try to think about those in a lot of different ways, but the core of those stories are about hospitality. It's making room for the presence of others who bless us when we don't necessarily know that. And that brings me to all of these school supplies, which we collect for the Harvest Hands Ministry for school children in Juarez, Mexico. And while we think about that as generosity, which it is, and we are grateful for, but it is also hospitality. It is recognizing that through the Spirit we are all connected, and that through these gifts, these children will receive our hospitality. So I invite you to hold out your hand as we bless these gifts and send them on their way. O oh God of wisdom, we give you thanks for schools and classrooms and for teachers and students who fill them around the world. We thank you for the mission of Harvest Hands and the generosity and hospitality of those who support it. We thank you for sharpened pencils, pointy crayons, and crisp blank pages waiting to be filled by the children in Juarez. Today we give you thanks for these your children. We ask you to bless these gifts as a sign to them that they have what they need to grow and learn this year in school. May these children be blessed with curiosity, understanding, and the joy of learning. Guide us by your love that we may continue to support them in prayer and service. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who as a child in the temple showed his longing to learn about you, and as an adult taught by story and example of your great love for us. Amen. First scripture reading this morning is from Genesis 18, verses 1 through 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready, quickly, three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. 
Abraham ran to the herd, took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old, and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. Our second reading comes to us from the Gospel according to Luke. I read from chapter 10, beginning in verse 38. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. And may God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of these holy words. Will you pray with me? O oh God, we are grateful for this time to be together, to sing your praises, to be still and know your presence, to welcome you and see you more clearly in our lives. And now as we take in your word, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you alone are our rock and you alone our redeemer. And for this, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. In churches where there is a tradition of saints and naming churches after them, it's not uncommon to find churches named after Martha and Mary. In fact, often together. And it is quite often intentional in doing that and a reminder to the congregation that it takes both Martha's and Mary's to make the church alive, to do the work the church is called to. It takes doers and it takes 
people who can stop and be present and listen and take in the word. It takes people who offer hospitality, do works of justice, serve in ways great and small, including in kitchens and preparing and feeding others. And it takes those who need to listen for what God is saying to them, what God might be saying through the present day realities about where we are called to go and what we're called to do, how we're called to serve God. We are very much in the hospitality industry. Hospitality is central to who we are as a community of faith. It's one of the things that is important. Whether it's offering food and coffee after church or making sure the space is clean and bright and looking fresh, that lights are on, that there's a face there to greet somebody on a Sunday morning, that's all part of hospitality. It's also making sure that our space is available and we welcome those into it without any particular expectations other than to have a place to be still, a place to feel nourished in body and mind and spirit, a place to feel fed and comforted. Community dinners are once again going to happen starting next month a scene, an act, and moment of hospitality. Just a couple of days ago, our doors of the sanctuary were open, and we had a funeral here for a 17-year-old girl who died in a car accident. The family wasn't part of the church, nor were they particularly religious or of some tradition. But in the midst of that heavy and tragic grief, they needed a space to gather together and with all of her friends. And so they were here. Hospitality was offered. Hospitality is rooted in the ancient biblical and Middle Eastern traditions, which we hear about in these stories. Stories when God shows up at the table. God shows up at the tent in the house. There's table graces out there that people will say before meals that ask that God come and be present and be a guest at the meal. Well, here we have stories of people recognizing and seeing God as their guest. And upon that guest showing up, there were norms and expectations and rituals and it was just understood you showed hospitality so abraham gets sarah to start to whip up a meal for these three folks jesus comes into martha's house after he was invited in and she begins to whip up a meal to feed to care for to show respect and honor. That was all tied up in the practices of hospitality. It was never just get down to business or have a quick conversation. It was a chance to be with one another and know with one another and learn a little bit about one another's stories and then see what unfolds. What amazing things unfold when we welcome God as a guest and show hospitality. Consider what happens with Sarah and Abraham. When God shows up, grace abounds. New life is offered because it's at the end of the meal at the end of that time together, where Sarah is told new life will begin for her 
and Abram. That new life will be there. God shows up, and God doesn't leave before offering a bit of grace. And for Sarah and Abraham, that bit of grace was new life that would come with her bearing a child. When God showed up at Martha's house, what unfolded was this moment we all can probably appreciate. Martha working hard and the doer, Mary just sitting and listening, seemingly to Martha ignoring the expectations and the norms of hospitality, particularly for a woman in that time. She gets frustrated and upset. And if we consider that image of her, Martha, and the kind of frustration and anger, here she wants some justice. She wants Jesus to say to Mary, go back and help your sister. Go back and do what you're supposed to do. But when God shows up, there's the promise of grace and of new life and new beginnings. And so grace intervenes. And Jesus says to Martha that Mary is doing the better thing in the moment by sitting and listening. He's not going to scold her, admonish her, send her back. He's going to let the moment be and let her be. And maybe for Martha, too, it was a new beginning, because we don't know how things turned out after that moment, where she saw things differently, where she recognized the importance and the power of listening, of just being, and particularly being with God. Martha was not better than Mary because she was doing and fulfilling her responsibility. Mary was not necessarily better than Martha forevermore. What I think Jesus was trying to point out to in this presence and gift of grace at the table before Jesus left was to consider the importance of both doing and being. And maybe more importantly and relevant for us is how we can get so caught up in the doing. Whether it's a cultural expectation, whether it's a home and family expectation, whether it's our own personal set of expectations that we put upon ourselves, the limitations. We have to keep going, going, going and doing. We're trying to keep up with the coworker or with the neighbor. We're trying so hard and we're running so fast and sometimes it feels like we're not getting anywhere better and even if we are forced at times to do to act to work to serve what balances that is the opportunity and chance to be to sit and be to welcome God into our moment, to be open, and to remember that as we know God, God certainly knows us very well. Like the one who said to Sarah, when she denied that she laughed, said, I know you laughed. I know you, and I love you, and I will bring new life to you and through you. I will pour out grace upon grace on you. And to Martha and to Mary, I know you. I know how you serve and what you do. 
I know you who work so hard, Martha, and love what you do, and feel that's a way, a fulfilling way to care for others. But I want you also to take a breath and a pause and consider the moments where you might stop and listen. Reflect on what is necessary to do for work and what is not necessary. And Mary, for you to celebrate and share the promise and power and grace that comes in listening. And once Jesus leaves the room, once the angels leave the tent of Abraham and Sarah, the story goes on. Their lives continue. They have been touched in a moment of grace. They have been reminded of the power of hospitality, whether it be strangers or family or friends or God, to invite them into our midst to sit and talk and be with one another, to serve and feed and care for one another. Moments of grace abound everywhere. And those are gifts. Moments of new life pop up. New perspectives and refreshed bodies and souls happen. Peace and calm and stillness are offered. It's food for the journey, as much as the meal that would be shared. It's food for the soul and for the journey of the spirit and for us as disciples. So may we who are doers of the word also balance that out with just being and taking in the word. May we work at our invitation to be a hospitable people in a hospitable place so that others may know the presence of God who we invite to be with us and who promises to grace us with so much. Will you please join me in affirming our faith? In the midst of hunger and war, we celebrate the promise of plenty and peace. In the midst of oppression and tyranny, we celebrate the promise of service and freedom. In the midst of doubt and despair, we celebrate the promise of faith and hope. In the midst of fear and betrayal, we celebrate the promise of love and life. In the midst of sin and decay, we celebrate the promise of salvation and renewal. In the midst of death on every side, we celebrate the promise of the living Christ. The Lord's vineyard is the house of Israel. 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 You have brought a vine, O oh Lord, out of Egypt. As you planted it, it grew to the sea. And as you cast away the nations, you make room for our souls, O oh Lord. 
come to a time of prayer this morning would invite us to draw together the joys and concerns that are upon our hearts this day and to lift them up to God along with those for whom we include in our prayer list this week first in a time of silent conversation and meditation Gracious God, we give you thanks for all of the Marthas and Marys who have helped to build your church, proclaim your gospel, nourish and serve one another, We pray that for each of us, you would strengthen our Martha moments and callings to do, to serve, to care for, to show love and justice to others to feed. And we pray that you would 
nurture and encourage merry moments in our lives. Being more intentional in taking time to be, to be still, to be with you, to listen to your word so that it might feed us, fill us, and guide us in our ways of being your servants, your disciples in your world. Continue to show us the power and promise that comes in our hospitality here in this community of faith. And keep our eyes open to moments when you, you walk through our doors, you show up as we are walking down the street. And wherever we encounter you, may we welcome you in and give thanks for the moments of grace that are left behind after the encounter. Moments that give us new perspective, moments that draw us into new ways of being and doing, moments of life and love and grace for us and for others. Hear our prayer in the silent meditations of our hearts and return for them signs of your peace, even as we are bold to pray as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In Christ, we have a love that will not let us go. Through an offering, let us share this love in our community and to the ends of the earth. There's a wind blowing all across the land fragrant breeze of heaven blowing once again don't know where it comes from don't know where it comes let it blow of love turn your face to heaven let the water pour let it pour over me oh sweet rain 
come and pour over me. There's a fire burning coming from the sky. Awesome tongues of fire consuming you and I. Can you feel it burning? Burn the sacrifice. Let it burn over me. Come and burn over me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here be. Almighty God, accept all we offer you this day and give us generous hearts to serve you in all who claim our help. Amen. Amen. Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares could destroy, be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lane, be there at our labors and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. Lord of all Lord of all grace, your hand swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our homing and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentle. Lord of all calm, whose voice is content and whose presence is balm, be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the As we prepare to go out into the world, we who have been nourished by the light of Christ, who have been fed and taught, as we change the light, carry that generosity and that hospitality we have received out into the world this week and offer it abundantly.
So siblings in Christ, let us go out into the world in peace. Go out and get some ice cream. Go out and celebrate and enjoy this day. Be hospitable to one another and all whom you encounter. And invite God to come into your hearts and your tables in every moment of your lives to show you God's way for you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us now and forevermore. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. you. Let us share words and signs of peace with one another on this day.